This is Barrels and Barrels, a bourbon and baseball podcast with your hosts, Brandon Spinner and Michael Burns. And welcome into another episode of Barrels and Barrels, a bourbon and baseball podcast. I am Brandon Spinner alongside Michael Burns, as always, and this is going to be a whiskey or bourbon review instead of the uh, full episode. We're just going to be breaking down one whiskey, and it is a bourbon this week, and we'll get to that here in a second. But Michael Burns, it's after Christmas. How are you doing? How was your holiday, man? Frozen. Frozen, yeah. Most Uh, of the country. Let it go. <laughs> that was pretty good, wasn't it? That sounded tuned a little bit, right? Yeah. <laughs> we I had didn't a lot even of practice. warm up our voices. Yeah. Oh, he, yeah, running outside. You, how's your back? How's your butt? How's your uh, arm after I, uh, eating it? <laughs> I mean, I had shoulder, shoulder surgery a month, a right. week and a half ago. I That's can't the believe thing I, I was most scared of, like when I saw you go down. Yeah. I, so, like, I had thought about that, making that real the night before. And I was like, no, it's too, it's dark. You won't see anything. So, I'll wait till the morning because I'm, Thinking about it more, I was like, it'd be pretty funny if I fell. And I and, and not yeah, purposely, I, I ate it. Um, you can hear so, me laughing. I just I couldn't <laughs> believe it actually happened. Did you put the benchmark in overnight? Like you leave it out overnight? No, because it, it, it had stopped snowing already. Oh, okay. So you just cover it with the snow then? Yeah. Bon- yeah. Bonnie goes, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't know what we're talking about, on Instagram, which you can find us at Barrels and Barrels Pod, uh, go check us out there. But I had a couple different reels this week. I put one out uh, Christmas Eve of CYPB that I accidentally left out in the snow. Um, oh, you did got- accidentally leave it? It was accident. I did not mean <laughs> to do it. I, I was making reels, and uh, it was cold, and my phone died. So I went to go plug it back in and just totally slipped my mind that I left the bottle out in, out in the snow because I was trying to make a different reel with it. And I was like, this one works better. So then Michael remixed mine because what I said is we got three inches of snow, and uh, it snowed CYPB. Talk about a white Christmas. So Michael went to go check his yard because he got snow in Alabama. We did get snow. It was, and it actually, I don't think it was predicted to cause such a traffic nightmare. We, did, we expected a dusting. Right. But it, I, people, all over town were, were stuck. I think it was the flash freeze part of it that uh, took a lot of people by surprise. Especially I saw Green Mountain. Cecil Ashburn was a, a mess. Um, Anything with a slope. Yeah. So, uh, and I'll tell you what, in uh, Alabama, they don't know how to drive in it. So that's probably <laughs> made things a little worse as well. But you hit your are... brakes as quick as you can, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go as fast as you can, turn as fast as you can. Stay stay right on your the person in front of you's bumper. Yeah, it's, nothing can go wrong. And it sounded like nothing did go wrong out there in Huntsville, Alabama. And nothing can go wrong. <laughs> oh, no, it all went wrong. <laughs> um, but as we talked about, as we opened it up, this is Barrels and Barrels, a bourbon and baseball podcast. We are going to be doing a bourbon review this week, one of the bottles that has been going around in the last couple of weeks, the last couple of months. Uh, a fancier bottle. This is Remus Repeal Reserve batch six or series six uh which dropped out in september i was able to luckily grab a bottle in november so uh for those of you who are born under a rock or you didn't know prohibition happened in the early 1900s where you couldn't legally make or drink alcohol uh but that was repealed back in 1933 on december 5th with the 21st amendment so to commemorate that uh ross and squib distillery created what they call remus repeal reserve so this is batch six or series six um so what that is telling you what ross and squib is the distillery it's mgp um as this is in lawrenceburg uh indiana uh, so that is where this comes from. This comes in at 100 proof. The bottle itself, I'd call it more of an elegant looking. It almost yeah. seems like a, I was thinking like a hierarchy, like it almost feels like a king. Like, Yeah, and like the, the one that uh, Bourbon in the Borough had and posted about the Gatsby, the Gatsby one. Gatsby, yes. That one really, I mean, it makes you think about, I think the term Gatsby and the, I think the that time or term mm-hmm. movie fits that whole look perfect yeah the elegancy of the bottle itself so this is uh almost a rectangular look to it with a rounded edge on the top uh the cork has a little bit of a bevel to it um as it comes to the cap and that's i think where i get like that crown feel right like the square bottle like a uh 
I'm doing a real great job describing this, Brandon. But um, <laughs> so it says Remus repeal right in the middle. Um, I don't know if you know much about George Remus this itself. He was a bootlegger in Cincinnati, actually, Michael. So uh, there's George Remus regular bourbon, but George Remus reserve. So this is made from Lawrenceburg Ross and Squibb Distillery. They part of the squib in that distillery is actually in um, in honor of the distillery that uh, um, what's his face Remus uh, did all his whiskey work with or a have, lot of his whiskey work with. Have you had any other Remus besides this one? I have not. This is the first time I heard amazing things about the f- five. Uh, I actually have a bottle from our friend Kristen Swilly behind me of just the regular George Remus, uh, but this is the first of the repeal series that i have had uh but i've heard amazing reviews about number five yeah my uh my neighbor gave me his last spitful of five <laughs> and i thought it was great he gave me like a spitful and a half so yeah. of course i i got a spitful and a half of it tasting <laughs> didn't get to have any more after i thought it was really good yeah. so i'm excited bl- to see what six is all about yeah number five i think ranked as uh, one of the top five in fred minnick's list last year so just mm. put that on the pedestal of how good this is. So Ross and Squibb Distillery announced it's going to release this earlier this year. Uh, part of their distillery, uh, it's a an award-winning line, of course, with the fifth one coming in last year with high regards. So limited edition, so a limited time offer. Bottled at 100 proof. It's a suggested retail price of $99.99. I've seen it anywhere okay. from $99.99 online in some spots. Saw it in stores a couple times at 110 I have seen it as high as one forty to one fifty. So I saw here in Bama just the other day for what I tell you. What did I tell you? One twenty. One twenty. Okay, so not terrible. It was behind so the counter, of course. It's technically an eight year bourbon, uh, but there's a blend. It's a blended bourbon of five different barrels. Um, so if you know anything about MGP, they've got five different mash bills they've got okay. the corn mash bill which is 99 one then they've got a high rye and a low rye they've got a weeded and then they've got a malted barley this is going to come from their low rye and their high rye so two percent of this comes from a 14 year low rye at 21 percent rye 27 percent comes from a 10 year bourbon wow. with 21 percent rye. so it's a mix of eight year and 14 year bourbon so 2008 year old bottle a barrel uh two percent uh, 2012, 27%, 29% comes from 2014 low rye, and then the other high rye comes from 2012 and 2014. So a mix of eight year and 10 year old barrels. Uh, so that's what the medley is this year. I don't think that jumps out at you at all. I think you see a bottle like that, and it just kind of mm-hmm. looks like maybe I'll be a five, but that's a 14 year blend right there a little bit you know yeah like two percent bl- of it comes from a 14 year old barrel. oh two percent i missed that yeah two yeah. percent is 14 year old the rest is between eight and ten uh but still an eight and ten from yeah. from mgp for sure is a uh is right in their sweet spot for the most part so the remus repeal reserve series provides our team the opportunity to showcase the incredible array of aged reserves available to work with as well as our expertise at blending these bourbons to create a special medley each year uh said the head distiller uh, and master distiller ian Sturzman, um and his team of master distillers so this comes from as i mentioned ross and squibb from the 175 year old lawrenceburg distillery made in a signature high rise style the medley changes each year so that's why each year it's a little bit different um again msrp right around 99.99 and it comes in right on the dot at 100 poof cracking the bottle open all right let's do it pouring it up i've already had there was some go ahead there's almost some significant years there 2008 was and then your high school graduation right yeah, and 2012, 2012 was college. Yeah, right. And then I almost thought, when did you, uh, when did you get married? But yeah, that's just way shorter. later. <laughs> way <Yeah>. later. <laughs> <laughs> Waited a long time for that one. <laughs> so I've already had uh, I had this on December fifth, actually, in part of Repeal Day. Uh, the color itself, it's got a reddish brown tint, almost like a brickish color, a little less than brick. Uh, yeah. on the on the color but it's got a pretty good uh, brown tint to it um, I would say a darker amber uh, for the color itself on the nose I get the pretty strong notes and this was the one that we were making fun of a couple of weeks ago where I said if you use different nostrils and then you use both nostrils this is where I really got 
the like the different notes and different nostrils and this one really opened up i, I might need to pour more in. i'm struggling to pick up you know let's just go full send with my whole sample how about that full send go full send michael's going let's full send it, so in the next 10 minutes watch at out, the folks. end of this tasting watch out <laughs> barrels and barrels <laughs> so what so, are you picking up on that nose there uh, so I have five things written down from the last time. I'm picking up on three of them right now, eh, four of them right now. Uh, I've got cherry. The oak comes through for sure. It's got that leathery um, hint in vanilla. But I can pull in some coffee every once in a while. I definitely get the cherry There's up There's a little bit of coffee into that. That's an interesting note, Coffee. I don't get, mm -hmm. I'm struggling to pick up the strong. I feel like there's nothing that's really hit you in the face. They're there, but I'm not, nothing's overpowering. You know, like in previous past, you're like, oh, that's, that's right. grandma's apple pie right there. Grandma's cherry pie right there. But nothing's slapping me. As you read off your notes, I'm like, yeah, I could, I could, I could pick that up. But, yeah, and I wonder if that's just like note bias as you hear it and that's what your mind tells you it smells like, right? Yeah. But be before that, I was struggling to really pull a single strong note. So you got that Kentucky chew going. What you think on that first and second pull? I mean, I hate to call it smooth. It's smooth. It doesn't have much of a bite at the beginning. To me, uh, it's very even. The mouth feels very even. It builds a little bit as it's been out, like uh, after you've swallowed it a little bit, you got a little bit more of that that cinnamon burn towards the back, but not a burn that's overpowering by any means. Yeah, as I as I took my first sip and chewed it up, and as you were talking about it, it just it's ever changing. It's uh, different phases of it, and I still even after that first sip. If you if you're watching on the video, I can st it's still on the back of my tongue here. So the What's the term you use? Viscosity. Yeah, it's not thick. It's only it's 100 proof. So that this is on right. me, and, me and your fence, um, right? Where it gets too syrupy, lower than 100, and then you get a little more spicy as you get over. But uh, yeah, this doesn't this isn't too syrupy. Doesn't have that burn. I get a note that I usually don't get a lot. Like is is that leather? Oh, a leather taste a little bit. I can I um, I get a little bit of that. I actually get a lot of caramel up front there's caramel to me right off the bat Ooh. i have to stop listening <laughs> i mean <laughs> as i was sniffing i got you said caramel and as i was sniffing it again and i was like oh man strong caramel note there all of a sudden so yeah going go for further. your second sip yeah second sip here so this is the uh, Remus Reserve, or Remus Repeal Reserve, batch six. And as Michael makes his choice on his notes, I uh, just want to toss this out there. You can find us on YouTube with this review and uh, all the other reviews as well. You can find us just by searching Barrels and Barrels Pod or Barrels N Barrels Pod in this the YouTube search bar. Find us on Facebook, Barrels and Barrels Pod, as well as Instagram, Barrels and Barrels Pod. And you can find us on Twitter as well. So, Michael, you've uh, fully digested it, chewed on it. What do you get? Um, not that well, just like the nose, nothing's overpowering. It's a good blend. Um, fruit, fruit on the front, oaky in the middle. So it's, it's. I'm having trouble picking notes up of something that's overpowering myself. Um, the leather fit leather finish there's no ethanol finish i think i would mm -mm. so you could confuse leather and ethanol maybe a little bit right. um but it, it does linger well so that's what i like about it um so there is a flavor profile there it's not spicy finish it's not uh it doesn't burn um so i like it for that for that part but maybe my glass is cold or something i can't pick up the <laughs> notes i did have the heater on here for a minute because here this in my office the door was closed and uh, it was pretty cold. So I'm getting the same the same notes that I had the last time I had it. And uh, it's caramel up front, but the more I sip on it, I'm getting a raspberry tart. Um, almost like a shortbread raspberry tart to me. 
it's got a buttery feel up front, if that That's, makes sense. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, a buttery feel, and I get vanilla in it as well. And then what I wrote down for my finish is it's a, a building strong burn towards the back. The more you've had it, like the first sip, it's it's smooth and it's good, and you've got it on the back of your tongue. But after that second and third, I think it builds the more you've had it. I think there's a little bit more of a lingering burn, but it's not a bad burn. It's just like that I'm there. Um, I, I really enjoy this pour. It's not totally overpowering. Got a little bit of toffee on the back end as it finishes as well. Um, Butter is a great way to, to describe how this coats your mouth. If you got too big of a bite of butter on your toast or something, or if you literally took a bite of butter and it just sits and coats like when you, if you mm-hmm. go to wash butter off your hand it doesn't right. come off right away that's what's happening to my whole mouth here mm-hmm. the this bourbon is just cover is just coating my mouth in bourbon <laughs> <laughs> i i the, the strongest note i get is like a raspberry tart shortbread like uh like at one of those cookies that you would have like a raspberry filling in the middle uh with the shortbread cracker part of it mm-hmm. that's that's kind of like a fig what I, yeah, kind of deal. almost, almost, but more on the raspberry deal, um, and more of like a crunchy, buttery shortbread cookie. You get the the raspberry part on the front. Uh, r- yes, <clears throat> more so in the front and the middle. Towards the back half, it becomes a little more toffee and a little more vanilla-y. I'm st- I'm I'm not picking up a ton of the fruit. I'm more to getting just sh- butter, and a little oak, and then like just more butter a little bit. I'm struggling to find the the fruitiness of it and i'm so i'm just surprised while I'm, I'm struggling to pull something out of it because it coats the mouth well it's a good it's a good level bourbon spice wise mm-hmm. and i think that's that 100 proof so it's just yeah. like the even keel right in between right <laughs> it's not that barrel proof or even higher proof into the lower 100s but it's not into the low 90s where you would consider it almost very thin or as you like to say syrupy yeah so where are you fitting this one at on our barrels and barrels bourbon rating scale yeah uh i think i'm going everyday player um i poured the i poured a pretty good pour and right. if you're looking on youtube it's almost gone um, <laughs> i i would consider this a destroyable bottle like I've sent out a couple of samples. I've had a couple of other pours, but this is one that I would go to on a consistent basis uh, if I if it was readily available. And it, the the one issue there would be the one hundred to one hundred and ten dollar price point, right? Yes. This is one of those that I think I heard Zeke from Dad's Drinking Bourbon mention it the other day. This is one of them bottles I have to go hide somewhere, um, <laughs> so I don't crush it too fast because. I could easily sit here, and at 100 proof, you're not going to blow yourself away. So you can have a two, a two or three pours before you really start to feel it. And at that point, you're like, I got to have more. Like I could, I, I really want to pour a second pour of this right now. You know what? At looking over at the shelf, as you kind of mentioned that 100 proof and crushable, this is almost like, a, like there's sweet tea and unsweet tea. Mm-hmm. This is an unsweet tea. This is an unsweet Buffalo Trace. Buffalo Trace has the sweeter profile, but it coats your mouth well. I feel like this is an unsweet, unsweet Buffalo Trace. See, I got a little more sweetness out of it, more so with the raspberry tart. But again, like, and this is what we always say is everybody's palate's different, and everybody has a different thought on their their bourbon, but on their whiskey. So on the back of the bottle, uh, I said the initial taste inc- includes candied fruit and fig jam, followed by oak and barrel char, mint and slight caramel, nutmeg, toffee, and honey. Uh, I didn't get the honey. I didn't quite get the nutmeg, but I got the toffee on the back. No mint for me. Uh, and I normally, like, if it's got mint in it, I'm like, no. Uh, so it's got a little bit of that rye spice towards the back. I will say that. Yeah. Uh, What's the mash the, bill? Did you go over the mash bill already? So that mash bill is the split because it's a blend. Blend. 20, so it's uh, the low rye, which is 21% rye for three blends, and then high rye at 36% rye, and the rest is just going to be, um, I think it's 71, 21, and if I do the math, 8. 
Okay. Uh, let me pull it up right here on my phone as you do that. So tell me, Michael Burns, where do you rate this on our bar- barrels and barrels um, rating scale? I'm fighting myself because I'm, sh- I'm I, and it could be, you know, a little r- stuffy nose and such. Um, I'm fighting between a bench player and an everyday, a bench player and an everyday player, because I like that it doesn't have a spice. It doesn't have, um, it doesn't have the spice. It's not overpowering. Doesn't burn too much. It does have a good flavor. It fills my mouth well. So I would enjoy this. It's not something, uh, a bottle I think would, that I would not want to go back to. Um, so I'm, I'm fighting. I think I'm going to go with an everyday player. Um, I don't think it's, I, I think it is something that's easily drinkable. Yeah, I'm going back for a second pour, and that's why I'm going to say it's <laughs> it's an everyday player. So you asked about the mash bill. So when it comes to um, MGP, they have, as I mentioned earlier in the show, five separate mash bills that they go with blend. their bourbon. Um, so they have their corn, they have a high rye, they have a low rye, they have uh, a weeded, and then they have a, a malted barley. So the high rye is 60, 36, 4. And then the low rye is seventy five twenty one four, so it's four percent malted barley, and then it's a mixture of sixty one seventy five. So I would say percentage wise, you're probably looking at, I would say quick math sixty nine, um, and then sixty nine, twenty seven four for your mash bill. Okay, so I, I just did a my last. I just poured a, a big heavy mouthful and did a little blender, you know, mm-hmm. shake, shake and not stirred there, <laughs> and it really changed. I guess that changed it a little bit for me, doing you know shaking it around and uh, getting. But uh, I, I got more a little bit of the rye in that shaking, uh, mm-hmm. in that shaking mouthful. So yeah, I, I think this is has a good flavor profile. It doesn't it's not overpowering. So yeah, I want to confirm that everyday player. Yeah, and for those of you just joining us, if this is your first time listening, uh, we do a baseball rating scale going from Hall of Fame at the top of the charts down to the uh, all-star player, which is second. Third is everyday player. Fourth is bench, and then DFA is at the bottom, which means sayonara. We don't want you on your team. A bench player doesn't mean that you're uh, a knock. It's just that you're probably not going to be in the everyday lineup Mm -hmm. in something that you go to on an everyday basis, but... I really enjoy this pour. So t- hats off and cheers to those over at uh, Ross and Squibb or the MGP Distillery for uh, the blend of this. Roth, uh, the Remus Repeal Reserve Series 6, which, uh, again, you can buy for ninety nine ninety nine at MSRP, but I'm sure it's probably marked up in some spots because of the LTO part. LTO? Limited time offer. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the that's the jargon in the uh, whiskey is it, world. Is, it, is that the cool kids say these days? <laughs> that's what the cool kids say. That's what the cool kids say. But uh, yeah, this is LTO season, really. Like those uh, limited releases, the the allocated season. So I would say go grab a bottle if you had an opportunity. I would pay the hundred bucks again to get another bottle. Um, there you go. Very good. So. Awesome stuff there. I got that at the Kroger, uh, which is my go-to here in northern Kentucky and southwest oh, Ohio. The Kroger's, yes. as Michael likes to call it. Kroger's. No, no <laughs> people. No people. Don't listen to what Brandon is saying about me. <laughs> Lies. <laughs> uh, anything else on this Remus repeal batch six? No, I, I. but I just came to the realization that I poured my whole sample into that thing and I killed it already. I don't have it anymore. Yeah, so that lives up to your everyday player and this is why i would call it uh one of those hideable or crushable bottles that you're gonna pour several pours of and then you realize oh oh, oh crap i've drank half the bottle already i i am actually sad i i mean i have a couple <laughs> drops left and i'm i'm i am sad so i think that's a that is a, a sign there you know yeah Definitely a sign. So that's our rating. We'd love to hear what you thought about this. If you have one at home or uh, what you think about our podcast, please rate us and review us just like we rated and reviewed this bourbon. Um, You can do that by scrolling all the way down in your podcast settings, whether that's Spotify or in Apple Podcasts, which is where most of our listeners come. Oh, I did want to give a shout out. We've got a Dominican Republic listener now and also a Norway listener. So we Let's are go. becoming international, not just Germany. But um, 
Like worldwide, bar- barrels yeah, and barrels. Big. Worldwide, wide, 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 wide. Speaking of worldwide, we've got stickers and we've got T-shirts. So reach out to barrels and barrels at gmail dot com if you want one of those. Also, you can find us on Instagram, barrels and barrels pod. But again, as I was trying to say, please rate us and review us. We'd love to hear your thoughts. What can we do better as we move on here into twenty twenty three? As we want to bring you the best podcast possible, the best listening or viewing experiences. Some of you here worldwide, are watching wide, on. Wide. <laughs> I'm uh, Mr. Worldwide. <laughs> Mike is going <laughs> to shave his head. <laughs> Move to Miami. Um, <laughs> but that has been another episode and review, a bourbon review of Remus Repeal Reserve Series 6 or Batch 6 uh, coming from Ross and Squibb Distillery. Another episode of Barrels and Barrels of Bourbon and Baseball podcast. Thank you for listening. Again, you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Gmail, and YouTube. If you have any questions, please send those along. Michael Burns, any final words for our friends and family and listeners out there? No. Uh, I think was, I'm sad that this is gone. And uh, just want to say uh, Happy New Year, everybody. And uh, enjoy happy your holiday. Year. Get get a new pick out or a new bottle for your yeah. New Year's Eve, first pour of the year. So, happy new year. Here's to a happy, healthy, and uh, fun 2023. Big things coming, hopefully, from Barrels and Barrels. So, cheers to you. Cheers. You're not going to say, let's go? Let's go. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Have a good one, everybody. (laughs) 